Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. The Vanishing Doorknob by L.M. Haynes is a magical story that shares how one man reopens his troubled heart to those who care for him. As a young man growing up in the small town of Coventry, Kyle Grayson's life was one of love, family, and faith. A series of tragic events will cause his faith and need for others to be lost for years. After years of isolating himself from the rest of the world, Kyle finally realizes that the love of friends and family, a magical doorknob, and a mysterious stranger have restored his faith forever. Lawrence Haynes is a licensed land surveyor whose hobbies include music, sports, and illustration. His interest in illustrating and wanting to influence the lives of young people in faith-filled ways led to the creation of this book. A father of three adult daughters, an active member of St. Edward the Confessor Church in Syoset, New York, where here he and his family reside, Lawrence Hayes, author and illustrator of The Vanishing Doorknob, our guest on This Week in America. Larry, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. It's my pleasure to be here with you. What a job you've done with this book and several others that we'll be mentioning during the course of the program. And so much of your work is reflected in who you are, the upbringing that you had. Let's start by talking about where you were born and raised and touch on that that upbringing because it really gave you a, a, a faith-filled foundation for the rest of your life. Yes, it did. Actually, I was born in... Uh, the borough of Queens, which is part of the five boroughs of the city of New York, uh, raised in a, a, a town in Queens called Flushing. Um, I had a great mom and dad and uh, an older loving sister uh, who had a great influence on me. And I also came from a very large family. My mom's family was very large, had a great uh, amount of uh, aunts and uncles and cousins. And the same thing on my dad's, on my dad's side. And but it was, it was my mom who steered me toward um, you know toward my Catholic Christian faith. She enrolled me in the local Catholic elementary school, and then I went on to Archbishop Malloy High School and on to St. John's University in Queens. So, and and I was just also influenced by many of my teachers, the nuns, and the priests that I knew growing up. It's interesting. All of that in your background has made you who you are today, and able to to use these messages in the form of your books and illustrations. L.M. Haynes is how you'll find the book if you're you're looking at the website. Amazon, of course, ChristianFaithPublishing.com is the publisher, and they will also, you can order the book there as well. The book we're talking about specifically is The Vanishing Doorknob. Larry's got several others that we'll be talking about during the course of the program as well. With this background, you mentioned some of the people, the the church influence, uh, uh, everybody that that made you who you are today. You became involved in the profession of land surveying uh, and became a family business. How did that happen? Well, actually, my dad, um, probably back in the 1950s, uh, took a job with a local land surveyor in Flushing, New York. Uh, and it was something he must have been probably in his mid uh yeah, probably early 20s at the time, and it was something that he liked, and um, he got his license to land survey in New York State uh, in the mid-60s, and in 1970, he purchased a land surveying business from the man that he had originally worked for. Um, I was always exposed to it. I always liked the profession. I liked uh, the outdoors, being outdoors. I liked the creative part of it, which was drafting drafting maps, and it's just something I always love to do and something that I stuck with and have stuck with my entire life. I'm still, you know, I'm still doing it. It's still the centerpiece of my life 50 years later. No, it's interesting. You do that so well. As you do with the books, with the writing and the illustrating, what inspired you to begin writing and illustrating children's books and doing it at this point in your life? Because I know you've devoted quite a bit of, uh, of your attention to it now. Why now and why children's books? Um, I've always enjoyed drawing from the time I was, you know, a young boy. I, I drew sometimes for hours at a time, even through my, uh, even through my teen years, through high school years, I enjoyed doing it, but writing was never, was never a part of the equation. 
Um, and then when I was about 19 or 20, I met my wife. Um, and, you know, we were married a couple of years later, started our family. So it was just a natural course of business. Uh, you know, the, the drawing got put to the side burner. Um, I started about 30 years ago again trying to, to draw because I was at that point having the idea of wanting to, um, you know, start drawing again and maybe have an influence on my, my daughters who were very young at the time with these types of books. But again, just they were growing. They were involved in school. My wife and I were very involved in this in their schooling and, and, and their extracurricular activities. So again, it got put on the side burner. Um, about 14 years ago, my youngest daughter, Bernadette, who had been hounding me for many years to get a dog, and I kept, I kept, you know, <laughs> I kept putting it off. We finally got one. She was a beautiful little puggle named Lily, uh, who is in all the books. And my wife took pictures of her, and I started drawing those pictures of her. And it kind of evolved. And, and the idea for, the, for my first book, The Christmas Time Travelers, came to my head. And I decided to go ahead and try it. So I, I, I drew some more pictures. I wrote the story. And then looking, I, then I didn't know what to do because I had no experience in terms of how to getting a book published. So I contacted, I was laying in bed one night and saw a commercial uh, for self-publishing by Christian Faith Publishing. I contacted them. I sent them my manuscript. They loved the book and wanted to publish it. And, and, and you know, from that point on, uh, you know, that's where I've been publishing the books. Our guest on and the it's, 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 it has to do with, again, seeing a little bit of a deterioration in the morals you know, uh, of the country and yes. children not getting getting great lessons, and I just wanted to impart some of the great lessons that I had learned to my children. You know, it's interesting because this is a book that you can share with parents and grandparents, and, and that's really important, isn't it, that this is something that uh, uh, it's designed for, for the young reader, and they can share it, they can talk about it. It really opens up a lot of doors for conversation. Yeah, I appreciate that, yes. I, I think I think that's a, a lost start also sometimes, Parents don't take the time to sit down and read, read to their children. Um, I remember it being done, you know, to me when I was a child and my wife and I trying to do it to our girls. And um, I think just with the advent of so much television, uh, the Internet and iPads and iPhones and cell phones, that, that, you know, we have as parents have less and less time, even as grandparents, less and less time to do that with our children and our grandchildren. And I think it's so important because it really establishes a bond, uh, you know, with, with our children and grandchildren. It really does, and these books are designed for that. And it sounds like some of the co-stars in the books are in the background there as you're recording today. I want to make yeah. sure that you uh, you get a chance oh, to mention them. That's, that's Lily Benji. That's Lily <laughs> Benji and Carrot. Guys! I love that. They're having a good time. They've figured out that you were talking about them, so it's time for them to make their uh, their cameo appearance uh, on the program. The specific they're, they're, they're real characters. They're real characters. <laughs> the specific book is The Vanishing Doorknob. Now, the other books that Larry has written, The uh, Christmas Time Travelers that he talked about, A Christmas Story That Will Restore One's Faith in the Miracle of Christmas, and The Littlest Patriots, a heartwarming tale that teaches a lesson of patriotism to readers. This is uh, fascinating because, again, faith is so much a part of, of your life and a part of your writing. And I mentioned in the beginning that you're part of a faith community at St. Edward the Confessor Church. Uh, talk about that and how important that is. This is a, th a common theme of, of your life since childhood. Uh, yes, it is. Actually, when um, when I moved out to uh, Syosset in 1978 with my mom and dad from Queens, um, I got involved uh, with a youth group here at St. Edward the Confessor, and that's where I met my wife, Amy. Um, uh, we dated for four years um, and started to, uh, we were married in 1982, and uh, about four or five years later, started our family, and it was just a natural progression to, you know, continuing uh, with the church and trying to instill the same faith 
that I was instilled with, and also Amy, because she had the same type of upbringing, and trying to instill that in our three daughters. Uh, I think faith is, I mean, the only way faith survives is for it to be passed on from generation to generation. And, you know, that was a very important part of our lives. And a great way to do that, and what a legacy, is the books that you have written, The Littlest Patriots, The Christmas Time Travelers, The Vanishing Doorknob, the newest that we're talking about, written and illustration illustrated by uh, Larry Haynes, L.M. Haynes, if you're Googling that to, to find information on the book, available at Christian Faith Publishing at Amazon.com. Go to our website. You'll be able to, uh, to log on there as well and, and get all of the information. What inspired you to write this particular type of children's book, there's so many topics out there, and you address uh, a number of themes in the course of these these books, and I'm sure working on developing these themes for other books. What what led you to this particular uh, style, genre of, of children's book? I just happen to believe that three of the most important um, most important things we can teach our children are a faith and devotion to God, uh, devotion to your family, and devotion to your country. Um, I think without those three things, uh, there's really no strength in our society. So um, the, the, the Vanishing Doorknob and the Christmas Time Travelers uh, were really about stories of faith and stories about community. Um, the Littlest Patriots was inspired by just the number of people of what's been come to known as the greatest generation inspired in me. I, at my age, I had the great privilege to have many aunts and uncles. Um, my in-laws were all part of that generation. My mom and dad were a little younger than that. They were born in around 19, they were born in 1934, so. They really were not part of the, you know, they, my dad didn't serve in World War II. But just to listen to these people and hear their stories and, and know how much they sacrificed uh, for this country, especially during the Depression and the World War II, it, it's just very inspiring. And I think that, that it's a generation of people that should never, ever be forgotten. And sometimes I think we are forgetting them a little bit. Well, you bring it all to the forefront in the book, The Littlest Patriot, just one of three written by Larry Haynes, L.M. Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S, our, our guest on the program. Uh, talk a little bit about developing the messages that you and the themes that you convey to, to children, and I'm going to say their parents as well, because this is really a shared experience. What message do you attempt to get across in, in your books? Um. As I said, those three messages, um, the, I've always been interested in time travel. Uh, so when the story of the Christmas time travelers came to my head, I, you know, I just figured what logical, what more logical place to go yes. to than uh, you know, uh, Bethlehem when, when, when Jesus was born. And uh, instead of the main character of the book, Professor McDougall, Going back in his time machine, I thought it would be a nice idea for his three puppies to accidentally go back and to bring back some physical evidence of the event and, and test his faith. Um, when it came to the Littlest Patriots, again, it was just my way of honoring. Um, that story came to me just my way of honoring all of the people that I had known that were part of that greatest generation. And when it came to the... Vanishing Doorknob, um, I was inspired by a homily that was given by one of our deacons where he was speaking about community and how uh, intertwined our lives are with one another and how important it is to have human contact, which we're definitely finding out about over the last five months or so. Exactly. How, when we lack that human contact, how, how different we are and how lonely the world can be. Um, and he had mentioned, you know, some people that he had known that had withdrawn because of, you know, personal problems. And, and the idea then of, of uh, uh, a door being shut and a, uh, and a doorknob vanishing as they closed themselves to the world, that came up, you know, that came to my mind. 
the books so well written and beautifully illustrated. These are books that you could give as a gift, just give to your children. It doesn't have to be a gift, but great for gift giving. And these will be books that will be passed down from generation to generation. These are timeless stories so well told and illustrated. It's a, a wonderful, beautiful addition to, uh, to any home library. What are you working on in the future? I hope you've got uh, more books you're working on. And just in talking with you, uh, feeling your passion for what you're doing, I'm sure that there are other topics, other books that you're working on. Well, I, I currently have a book entitled Legacies, which is being published at this time by Christian Faith Publishing. They are in the process of doing some page design and cover design, and I'm hoping that that book will be available sometime within the next two to three months. And that's a story, again, about passing on uh, traditions to our children, whether it's um, holiday traditions and family traditions or, or the legacy that we learn from, uh, the legacy of unconditional love that we learn from our, our pets and our animals. And also a story of a young man in our community who passed away almost 30 years ago. He was 12 years old and passed from a rare form of cancer. And the story that his dad tells of, uh, of never asking why me. It's, it's just those important things, again, the passing down of, of traditions and ideas. And that's where I am with that particular book. And I'm working on a fifth book entitled The Magical Christmas Tree, which I'm probably about 70 or 80% done, and hopefully we'll be getting that published sometime next year. And hopefully we'll have a chance to talk about both of those books. You do such a, an excellent job. And again, this started at a young age, the interest in writing and illustrating. Family comes along, and this is put on the back shelf. Now it's time to go back to this God-given gift that you have to communicate these thoughts, these themes, these messages. What's this been like for you in, in getting back and getting the word out there and getting the positive feedback that you're getting? This has to be a very exciting uh, time in your life. It's very exciting. It's, it's very surreal because if you had, you know, if someone had mentioned to me that I would five years ago that I would be doing this, I probably would have said, you know, they were crazy, but... <laughs> the way a life evolves you just all of a sudden you just start doing something and you're guided in a different direction um my mom always used to say the spirit the spirit moved you and i have a very good friend here in st edwards who always said to me be open to spirit and go where you know go where your heart tells you to so um i just started uh again just started doing it and found my again found my love for for drawing and now have added to that my love for trying to, even, even through short stories like these, trying to uh, convey a message and make a difference. Sounds like what you just said in the words of your mother and your friend at church, uh, sort of a theme for another book. I can see that developing as well. It has been such a pleasure, Larry, to have you on the program. Larry Haynes, writing under L.M. Haynes, and Haynes is H-A-Y-N-E-S, the three books, The Christmas Time Travelers, The Littlest Patriots, and The Vanishing Doorknob. You'll love the book from the very beginning, from the cover. You'll be hooked uh, on the book, and the story follows charming stories that he tells so well, illustrates so well, written and illustrated by Larry. The book available, of course, the book's available at christianfaithpublishing.com, at Amazon, the usual places. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly and get all of that information Larry, it's been such a pleasure to have you on the program. Congratulations on the success you're having and the, uh, the, the families that are having this bonding experience by, by sharing your books. Thank you for being with us on the program. Well, thank you, Rick. I can't tell you how much I appreciate this opportunity, how great it's been to speak with you. And uh, as you said, hopefully sometime in the not-too-distant future we'll get to speak again. I would love to do that. I'm so impressed with your work. It's Larry Haynes, writing under L.M. Haynes, the latest book, The Vanishing Doorknob. You'll find it at Christian Faith Publishing, Amazon.com. And link on directly by going to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. 
Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.